Before starting the engine, check that everyone in the work area has gone through at least a basic training in safety procedures and has signed the RAP Trainee Liability Release Form. Trainees who have not yet signed the liability release should be standing well back from the operating unit. Take care that no children and no pets are nearby. The Honda engine must be running to operate the baler. Especially in cold weather, it's a good idea to start the engine as a first step so that it warms up during setup. Two ignition keys were provided with each new baler. One of these should be kept on file with the baler manager. Replacement keys can be ordered from a Honda dealer who will need to know the model number and other specification numbers that are stamped on the engine block behind the starter. The throttle controls the amount of fuel going to the engine. The choke is used to aid in starting the engine. When it's pulled out, it reduces the flow of air to the engine, thus enriching the fuel mixture. The throttle uses the visual cues of a turtle and a rabbit or hare to indicate levels of engine airflow and power. When starting a cold engine, set the throttle halfway between the turtle and rabbit positions. Pull out the choke, then gradually push it closed after the engine starts. When idling the engine, have the throttle in the turtle position with reduced airflow and power. Got it. All right, now I'm going to start. The balers will usually achieve adequate compression with the engine idling, but if the hydraulics are operating too slowly or if more power is needed, put the throttle midway between the turtle and rapid positions. Don't operate the baler with the throttle fully open in the rabbit position because it will shorten the engine life use excessive fuel, and be unnecessarily loud. The engine noise is loud. So RAP and the New York Center for Agricultural Medicine and Health strongly recommend that all helpers use earplugs or sound-reducing earmuffs to protect their hearing while the engine is on. Keep a supply in the toolbox. While we're on the topic of personal protection equipment, we'll point out that safety glasses are also strongly recommended particularly when working with wires to tie the finished bale. Eyeglasses and sunglasses don't provide sufficient protection unless they are safety rated, with lenses that fully wrap around. Keep a supply of safety glasses sufficient to outfit all helpers. Some should be for people who do not typically wear glasses, and others should be designed to fit over glasses. Dust masks are the third type of recommended personal protection equipment to be used as needed in moldy or dusty conditions. Check that these items are in hand before the baler leaves its home base and encourage all helpers to use the provided equipment to protect their ears, eyes, and lungs while using the baler. Now back to preparing to operate the baler. Wait until the hydraulic fluid has warmed to at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit before operating the hydraulic controls. Check the fluid temperature on the thermometer located on the front surface of the hydraulic reservoir. It's the vertical red line inside the hydraulic fluid level gauge. In cold weather, leave the engine idling while loading, with the throttle at the turtle position. In warm weather, turn the engine off if it won't be used for 10 minutes or more. Because the engine is air-cooled, be sure it is not covered while in use. We've covered the basic information about the engine that users need to know before operating the baler. For more information, see the Honda Engine Manual in the Parts and Maintenance section of this video and RAP's written guidelines. One more thing. To provide some protection to the engine components from exposure to road grit and salt, RAP has installed a shield on the front edge of the trailer frame on most of the balers operated under the auspices of the New York State program. Once the baler is in position and the engine is idling, lower the trailer bed to the ground for easier loading. Remember that the up-down position of the trailer bed is controlled by the small hydraulic system located in the right side of the storage box at the front end of the trailer. The first step is to remove the locking pin that secures the trailer bed in its raised position. If the pin is difficult to remove, push the up button on the orange handheld to control device to raise the trailer bed slightly. This will decrease the pressure on the pin so it's easier to remove. Before pushing the down button on the handheld control device, check that the area behind the trailer is clear, 
because the trailer bed will move back as it moves down. Lower the trailer bed until it's sitting firmly on the ground. Otherwise, it may be difficult to open the baler door.